I did not write this, and I was unable to find its author, but it is very powerful and very timely, so I am reproducing it for you here. It's called The Jewish Boycott. A short time ago, Iran's Supreme Leader Grand Ayatollah Ali Khamenei urged the Muslim world to boycott anything and everything that originates with the Jewish people. In response, Meyer M. Trankman, a pharmacist, out of the kindness of his heart, offered to assist them in their boycott as follows. Any Muslim who has syphilis must not be cured by Salverson, which was discovered by a Jew, Dr. Ehrlich. He should not even try to find out whether he has syphilis, because the Wasserman test is the discovery of a Jew. If a Muslim su suspects that he has gonorrhea, he must not seek diagnosis, because he will be using the method of a Jew named Neissner. A Muslim who has heart disease must not use digitalis, a discovery by a Jew, Ludwig Traube. Should he suffer a toothache, he must not use Novocaine, a discovery of the Jews, Vidal and Weil. If a Muslim has diabetes, he must not use insulin, the result of research by Minkowski, a Jew. If one has a headache, he must shun pyramidon and antipyrin due to the Jews, Spiro and Eleg. Muslims with convulsions must put up with them because it was a Jew, Osper Liegreich, who proposed the use of chloral hydrate. Arabs must do likewise with their psychic ailments because Freud, father of psychoanalysis, was a Jew. Should a Muslim child get diphtheria, he must re refrain from the Shik reaction, which was invented by the Jew, Bella Shik. Muslims should be ready to die in great numbers and must not permit treatment of ear and brain damage, the work of Jewish Nobel Prize winner Robert Baran. They should continue to die or remain crippled by infantile paralysis because the discoverer of the anti-polio vaccine is a Jew, Jonas Salk. Muslims must refuse to use streptomycin and continue to die of tuberculosis because a Jew, Zalman Waxman, invented the wonder drug against this killing disease. Muslim doctors must discard all discoveries and improvements by dermatologist Judas St. Benedict or the lung specialist Frankel and of many other world-renowned Jewish scientists and medical experts. In short, good and loyal Muslims, properly and fittingly, should remain afflicted with syphilis, gonorrhea, heart disease, headaches, typhus, diabetes, mental disorders, polio convulsions, convulsions and tuberculosis, and be proud to obey the Islamic boycott. Oh, and by the way, don't call for a doctor on your cell phone, because the cell phone was invested in, invented in Israel by a Jewish engineer. Meanwhile, I ask, what medical contributions to the world have the Muslims made? The global Islamic population is approximately 1.2 billion people, or 20% of the world's population. They have received the following Nobel Prizes in literature, Najib Mahfouz, in 1988. In 1978, the Peace Prize, Mohammed Alwar El Sadat, in 1990, Elias James Corey, 1994, Yasser Arafat, and in 1999, Ahmed Zawai. In economics, zero. Physics, zero. In medicine, Peter Bryan Medawar. And in 1998, Fareed Murad, total of seven. The Jewish population in the world is approximately 14 million. That's 0.02% of the world's population. They've received the following Nobel Prizes. Literature, 1910, Paul Heiss, 1927, Henry Bergson. 1958, Boris Pasternak. 1966, Shmuel Yosef Agnon. 1966, Nelly Sachs. 1976, Saul Bellow. 1978, Isaac Bashevis Singer. 1981, Elias Canetti. 1987, Joseph Brodsky. 1991, Nadine Gordimer Ward. The Nobel Peace Prize Jews were uh, winners that were Jewish were 1911, Alfred Fried. Uh, 1911 as well, Tobias Michael Karen Asser, 1968, Rene Kassin, 1973, Henry Kiss Kissinger, 1978, Menachem Begin, 1986, Elie Wiesel, 1994, Shimon Peres, 1994, Yitzhak Rabin, Nobel Prize in Physics that were Jewish, 1905, Adolf von Bayer, 1906, Henry Moisan, 1907, Albert Abraham Michelson, 1908, Gabriel Lippmann, 1910, Otto Wallach, 1915, Henry Wilstetter, 
1918, Franz Heber. 1921, Albert Einstein. 1922, Niels Bohr. 1925, James Frank. 1925, Gustav Hertz. 1943, Gustav Stern. 1943, George Carl de Hevesi. 1944, Isidore Isaac Rabi. 1952, Felix Bloch. 1954, Max Born. 1958, Igor Tom. 1959, Emilio Segre. 1960, Donald Glazer. 1961, Robert Hofstadter. 1961, Melvin Calvin. 1962, Lev Davidovich Landau. 1962, Max Ferdinand Porutz. 1965, Richard Feynman. 1965, Julian Schwinger. 1969, Marian Gelman. 1971, Dennis Gabor. 1972, William Howard Stein. 1973, Brian David Josephson, 1975, Benjamin Modelson, 1976, Burton Richter, 1977, Ilya Prigorgin, 1978, Arno Allen Penzias, 1978, Peter Kapitska, Kapitza, 1979, Stephen Weinberg, 1979, Sheldon Glashow, 1979, Herbert Charles Brown, 1980, Paul Berg, 1980, Walter Gilbert, 1981, Roald Hoffman, 1982, Aaron Klug, 1985, Albert Hoffman, 1985, Jerome Carl, 1986, Dudley Hirschback, 1988, Robert Huber, 1988, Leon Letterman, 1988, uh, Melvin Schwartz, 1988, John Steinberger, 1989, Sidney Altman, 1990, Jerome Friedman, uh, you know what? There's so many more. I'm going to stop. This is too many. 129. I continue with the essay. The Jews are not promoting brainwashing children in military training camps, teaching them how to blow themselves up and cause maximum death of Jews and non-Muslims. Other non-Muslims. The Jews don't hijack planes nor kill athletes in America, nor blow themselves up in German restaurants, or I might add, behead children. There is not one single Jew who has destroyed a church. There is not a single Jew who protests by killing people. The Jews don't traffic slaves, nor have leaders calling for jihad and death to all the infidels. Perhaps the world's Muslims should consider investing more in standard education and less in blaming the Jews for all their problems. Muslims must ask what they can do for humankind before they demand that humankind respects them. Regardless of your feelings about the crisis between Israel and the Palestinians and Arab neighbors, even if you believe there is more culpability on Israel parts, the following two sentences say it all. If the Arabs put down their weapons today, there would be no more violence. If the Jews put down their weapons today, there would be no more Israel. Benjamin Netanyahu said, General Eisenhower warned us, it is a matter of history that when the Supreme Commander, Commander of the Allied Forces, General Dwight Eisenhower, found the victims of the death camps, he ordered all possible photographs to be taken and for the German people from surrounding villages to be ushered through the camps and even made to bury the dead. He did this because he said in words to this effect, get it all on record now, get the films, get the witnesses, because somewhere down the road of history, some bastard will get up and say this never happened. Recently, the UK debated whether to remove the Holocaust from its school curriculum because it, quote, offends the Muslim population, which claims it never occurred. It is not removed as yet. However, this is a frightening portent of the fear that is gripping the world and how easily each country is giving into it. It is now more than 65 years after the Second World War in Europe ended. Now more than ever, with Iran, among others, claiming the Holocaust to be a myth, it is imperative that the world never forgets. This email is intended to reach 400 million people. Perhaps you would be a link in this memorial chain and help distribute this around the world, or not. How many years will it be before the World Trade Center, quote, never happened, because it offends some Muslim in the United States. In any case, that's, uh, that story is called The Jewish Boycott. Again, I did not write it, and I could not find its author, but I thought it was uh, worthy, especially in these times of sharing. And it probably was a mistake for me to even start reading that list of 129 uh, Jewish Nobel Prize winners in contrast with the seven that have been Muslim. But uh, forgive me for doing that. I, I'm doing the best I can. In any event, uh, I do thank you for watching. I welcome your thumbs up and accept your thumbs down. I always look forward to your comments and especially like it if you hit the share button below. Share on social media so that my efforts can have broader impact. And I am flattered if you choose to subscribe to my channel. And certainly would welcome you taking a look at any of my 28 books. 
Uh, they're all on Amazon. You just go there and find and search on my name, Marty Nemko, N-E-M-K-O, and you'll find more than you can stomach. In any event, I do thank you for watching. I am Marty Nemko.